and the people, Joshua's audience, were able to experience the reality of the words of God, just like what we said earlier. earlier. Great is His faithfulness to Israel and to the Church of Jesus Christ. God brought Israel from Egypt to bring them into the Promised Land, and it was only by God's grace that they had God's blessings. All that we have, my friends, all that we have is only by the grace of God. Why did Joshua start the call to commitment by recollecting their history? Through their history, they could know who God is and what God has done despite their attitude. If, or if our blessings are always connected to our attitude, what would we get? Nothing. Because just like the Israel, we are still blessed people. What will they discover in their history that should motivate them to commit their lives to serving God? To serving God? It was the fact, listen carefully, it was the fact that God committed himself to them first. The call to commitment is this. God committed himself to them first so God is calling for their commitment. God took the initiative. It's always God. For us Christians, we must remind ourselves who we were before we met Christ. Pwede bang tandaan mo? Alalahanin nyo yung oras ng mga taon bago nyo na meet na-encounter si Cristo. I ask, I think we, a similar question. We ask this question to the men's Bible study. And most of them, most of them answer, what, what is your life before you? What is life? What, what is your life without Christ? It's miserable. Sabi niyo sa, nasa kulungan ba? Something like that? What is our life without God? And since you already have God, I want you to remember your life before you met Christ. How miserable our lives were, how hopeless we were, and how sinful we were. We may be, we may have everything we want before, but without direction. But because of the grace of God, everything in our lives changed. In Christ, we are forgiven. In Christ, we know we are loved. In Christ, we are blessed. In Christ, we are hopeful of eternal life. In Christ, we are saved. And it was God who took the first step in our salvation. John 15 verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you go and bear fruit. In our perspective, we choose God. But in, the, in God's perspective, He first chose us. According to Jesus Christ. Just like with Israel, God has committed Himself to us first. He's committed to loving you. He's committed to protect you. He's committed to guide you. He's committed to deliver you. He's committed to help you. And He's committed to bless you. And He's asking us, and He is asking you to commit yourself to Him. As a response. Siya mo na yung nag-commit sa kanyang sarili sa atin. So as a response to that, He wants you 
to commit your life serving Him. Remember this. Salvation is always the foundation of a commitment to God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1, By the mercies of God, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, He loved me and He gave His life for me, so I live it by faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8, 9, and 10, By grace you've been saved through faith, not by your own doings, so do good works, verse 10. Salvation first, then commit yourself to Him. Friends, God is good. God is good. All the time. If so, commit yourself to Him. Second point, make a conscious choice. After Joshua's recollection of God's goodness in verses 1 to 13, now verses 4 to 15, 14 to 15, Joshua challenged the people to fear and serve the Lord with all faithfulness. Everybody, I want you to read it out loud. After three, one, two, three, begin. So now fear God and serve Him in integrity and truth and put away the gods which your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve Yahweh. If it is even, next, is it there, verse 15? If it is even in your sight to serve Yahweh, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you were living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. After restating, after recollecting, after remembering the, God, the goodness of God and the grace of God, now I want you to make a decision. Now I want you to make a commitment. Choose for this day who you will serve. <coughs> who will you serve? Friends, Joshua was speaking here. Heads of the family, you need to decide who to serve. You must learn to say, parents, you must learn to say, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You need to make a decision. In making a concrete commitment, you must choose and make a decision. There's no such thing as neutrality in the scripture. There is no such thing as playing safe in the scripture. I want to stay in the middle. There's no such thing. It's either you are in or out. Just like what Sandal Park said, in or out. Pat Riley said, quote, oh, there are only two options regarding commitment. You're either in or you're out. Friends, Make a decision. As to me and my house, we will serve the Lord no matter what. Joshua said, Choose for yourselves today. Not tomorrow, not the next day, not the next month. Choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. And Joshua was wise enough to ask that question, for he knew that everybody worships something or someone, whether they realize it or not. I don't want to choose. No. Everybody is serving something or someone, regardless if you are aware of it or whether you're not. Bob Dylan said, Bob Dylan is a song entitled, You Gotta Serve Somebody. And this is his song. You must choose. Regardless of who you are, you must choose whom to serve. Bob Dylan said, You may be an ambassador of ambassador to England or France. You may like, like to gamble, you might like to dance. You may be the heavyweight champion of the world. You might be a socialite with a long string of pearls. You may be a construction worker working on a home. Might be living in a 
mansion, you may live in a dome, you may own guns, and you may even own tanks. You may be somebody's landlord, you may even own banks. Might like to wear cotton, might like to wear silk, might like to drink whiskey, might like to drink milk, might like to eat caviar, you might like to eat bread, maybe sleeping on the floor, sleeping in a king size bed, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you're gonna have to serve somebody. Well, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. Regardless of your status in life, regardless of who you are, you gotta have to serve somebody. It is either the Lord or somebody else or something else. Everybody's worshiping something or someone. And it has to be the Lord if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. If the Jews didn't worship the true God, they would end up serving the false gods of the wicked nations in Canaan. His point was that they couldn't do both. They couldn't serve Yahweh and at the same time serve other gods. It is impossible. They couldn't have none. I don't want to choose. I, I neither like God nor the other gods. You're gonna have to serve somebody. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve how many? Two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. You need to choose today. You need to choose today. For Christians today, idols are not those carved images. Idols are those who are those we place before God. Idols sometimes come in the form of money, relationships, career, academics, social media, trends, business, possessions. Anything we value more than God is an idol in our lives. Joshua's commitment is a model of, of standing in the faith, even when it means standing out of the majority. When he said, but as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh, he's like saying, even if others don't, I and those who's under me will serve God. Joshua's concrete choice and commitment show he was fully convinced that the Lord is far better than anything in this world. It's like saying, God is enough for me and therefore I am going to commit myself to Him. Parents, you must be here with what you want for your family. Yes, you cannot control their decisions. Yes, you cannot control their future, their destiny. But at least God has given you the responsibility to teach them and raise them in the faith. Do your part. Lastly, number three. And if you want to make a decision, understand the demands. If you want to apply to OPA, then there are demands, and you have to meet those demands. There's a contract. Do you want to commit yourself to the Lord? Let's see. Now, after Joshua encouraged them to make a decision, verses 16 to 18, the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake Yahweh to serve other gods. Wow, sounds like Peter. Iwanan ka na ng lahat. Hindi ako. Lax. Totoo ba? Far be it from us that we should forsake Yahweh to serve other gods. For Yahweh our God is He who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of slavery and who did these great pain signs in our sight and kept us through all the way in which we went and among all the peoples through whose midst we 
has and Yahweh drove out from before us all the peoples, even the Amorites who live in the land. We also will serve Yahweh, for He is our God. Tapos di sila rin matalo kay Joshua. Joshua said, For as we in my house, I will serve the Lord. The people said, We will also serve Yahweh, for He is our God. The people have decided, Yes, we will commit our lives to the Lord. And that's what everybody else does all the time. I mean, if you give them an option, Choose from this day on, whom you will serve, God or something else. Of course, the answer will always be a resounding, we will serve the Lord. Automatically, nobody will say, I'm going to choose other gods. I'm going to, I'm going to commit myself to, my, to other gods. Nobody will say that. So, they chose the Lord. Okay? So the people have decided they will serve the Lord. And if you think Joshua was happy enough to end the address there, no, he wasn't. Hindi pa sa sapat para kay Joshua. Joshua warned the people of the demands for their commitment. Verse 19, Joshua reminded them of the characters of God and he mentioned two important characters of God that they must consider if they really want to commit and serve the Lord. First character, do you really want to serve the Lord? The people say, we will serve the Lord. Therefore, know that He is holy. The holiness of God refers to the absolute moral purity of God and the absolute moral distance between God and His human creatures. What does it mean? Since God is holy, those who want to commit their lives must be holy also for Jesus, for God said in Leviticus and for Peter said in 1 Peter, be holy for I am holy. He's not, they must forsake disobedience and sin if they are to commit their lives to the Lord. He's not saying that only perfect people can commit and serve God because nobody can be qualified if that's the requirement. What Joshua is saying is, if we really are decided to commit our lives to God, we must conform our lifestyle to the holiness of God. Number two, what's the second character? God is a jealous God. But remember, God is possessing of the worship and service that belong to Him. That's the definition of God, of God's jealousy. When we use the word jealous, we use it in the sense of being envious of someone who has something we do not have. But God's jealousy means God is jealous when someone gives to another something that rightly belongs to Him. All loyalty and worship belong to the Lord. There is a good jealousy and there is a wrong or a sinful jealousy. Listen carefully, for example. Wow, so you don't know. Good and righteous jealousy. If a husband sees another man flirting with his wife, he is right to be jealous, for only he has the right to flirt with his wife. This type of jealousy is not sinful. Rather, it is entirely appropriate. Being jealous of something God declares to belong to you is good and appropriate. Jealousy is a sin when it is a desire for something that does not belong to you. That's envy. Worship, praise, honor, and adoration belong to God alone for only He is truly worthy of it. Therefore, God is rightly jealous when worship, praise, honor, or adoration is given to idols. <coughs> what was Joshua doing? Joshua was destroying the people's emotional and momentary highs by making the demands of their commitment clear. He was ensuring that the people were really sure of what they were saying. 
after these words, the people insisted. Verses 21 to 22. And the people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve Yahweh. And Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourself, yourselves, that you have chosen for yourself, yourselves Yahweh to serve him. And they said, We were witnesses. Since the people insisted on, on their commitment, Joshua gave them the requirement. And what was the requirement? Verse 23. So now, everybody, put away the foreign gods which are in your midst and incline your hearts to Yahweh, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, We will serve Yahweh our God and we will listen to his voice. We're almost done. Three things. To say you commit your life to God means you serve Him. Serve Him. We've heard the message about servant through that Sunday through Pastor Jason. Serving God means you use what you have to glorify God inside and outside this building. Okay? Of course, it includes using your gifts and exercising your ministries. But serving God can also be expressed as you do the simplest chores in the house. Helping other people, meeting other people's needs, giving your best at work, and sharing Jesus with your friends and classmates. Serving God means doing all things for the glory of God, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, and working heartily as for the Lord rather than men, Colossians 3, 23. That's how we serve Him. Serving the home, serving the workplace, serving the school, serve Him anywhere. Next, put away foreign gods. Put away foreign gods. During this time, the Israelites still carried their idols and worshipped them secretly. Committing yourself to God means putting away all the idols, all rivals away, and don't pick it up again. Remember that God is a generous God. Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, 45. You shall not make for yourself an idol, because an idol is something that you can make. Every one of us have the ability to make his own idol. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Verse 5. You shall not worship them or serve them for I am Yahweh your God and a generous God. Isaiah 42 verse 8. I am Yahweh. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven images. Number three, if you say you commit your life to God, it means you incline your hearts to God. Committing our life to the Lord is not exclusive to just serving. It involves our affection. The Old and New Testament say, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. You don't just do, you love God. As we end, and by the way, please stand. As we end, to be a Christian or a follower of Christ is a demanding pursuit. Contrary to what we formerly knew, we were raised or to lie, we were raised that if you just know the terminologies, be familiar with the traditions, and just be present every Sunday, that is all there is. To be affectionate to Jesus, or to like or be amazed by Jesus and his teachings is not enough. Jesus is also not after the numbers only. Rather, he desires true 
followers who are willing to commit their lives to Him. To be a Christian is a demanding pursuit. Jesus said, Luke 14, 25 to 30, Many crowds were coming, were going along with Him. And He turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it, lest when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who observe it begin to ridicule him, saying, This man began to build and was unable to finish. Know the demands of Christ. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. A.W. Tozer said, Everybody, a true disciple does not consider Christianity a part-time commitment. Will you please turn to the person beside you? Are you a part-time Christian or a full-time Christian? Part-time. Huh? Part-time? Are you part-time or a full-time Christian? Huh? Walang kasha? Everybody must be a regular, full-time Christian. The true disciple does not consider Christianity a part-time commitment. He has become a Christian in all parts of his life. He has reached the point where there is no turning back. If you have decided to follow Jesus, I want you to say to yourself, self, no turning back. No turning back. And if you have decided to commit yourself to the Lord, yes, it may be hard and full of sacrifice. But let me tell you that committing your life to the Lord is the best and most rewarding decision you could ever make. This time I invite you to pray. I want you to commit. I want you to say your own commitment to the Lord. The Lord, no turning back. No turning back. I am surrendering my life to you. I am surrendering all of my resources to you. I am surrendering all of my time to you. All of my days, all of my years, my whole life to you. I am even surrendering, committing my own family to you. As to me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This time, let us continue in the spirit of prayer. Let us proceed to our congregation and prayer. Earlier, we just sang, we speak the name of Jesus. Name is so powerful. This time, let us pray for the church, for our local church. Let's speak the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with regards to our church concern. Let's pray for the church, our church maturity, church growth when it comes to our quantity, more disciples, more committed followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray and speak Jesus for our financial um, status, and let us pray for the coming local church house election. Let's pray for our local church.
this time let us pray for our own families if your family is here make sure you make, make a group and pray for your family's salvation every member pray for your family's salvation and pray for your relationship as a family you can if your family is here then make a group and pray for them <coughs> Jesus to your family. This time, let's pray for yourself. Pray for your own personal evangelism. Pray for your spiritual maturity. Pray for your growth in holiness. And pray for your ministry. If you, are, if you want to be used by God, pray for the ministry where God can use you. Pray for yourself. One last thing. I want you to find a partner and pray for one another. Find another partner. Find a partner who can move around this building and pray for them.
glorify you at this very moment. Lord, thank you for everything that you have done in our lives. As we remember all your goodness, as we remember your grace, as we remember our salvation, Lord, we thank you. You deserve all the glory, praises, and honor. Lord, we thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this relationship with the true and living God. Thank you for saving us from the pit. Thank you for saving us and thank you for giving us hope. Hope, eternal life. Thank you because there is a way, there is glory that awaits us in heaven. No matter what we're experiencing right now, we know that these are all temporary. This will all end, this will all come to pass. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you because we know that all of your promises will surely come to pass. Help us to trust you. Help us to be patient. And Lord, as a response to the message that we have heard earlier, help every parent, help every head of the family to commit their lives first to the Lord and their family. Make them a good example of the faith. Make them, O oh Lord, a good Christian. Help them to live a righteous life. Help them to be holy because you are holy. Help us, O oh Lord, to conform our, our lifestyle to your character. Help us to remember that you are the holy and generous God. You deserve our adoration, our affection, our worship, and our service. Lord, in this very moment, we commit everything to you. We commit everything to you. And for our doxology, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 to 21. Now to him who is able.